All right, guys. Uh, now I'm going to start talking to you about the Tarquin dynasty, or uh, you could just call them the Tarquins. There's going to be three Roman kings, okay? So the Tarquin dynasty will be the last three kings of the Roman kingdom period. Now recall the preceding uh, four Roman kings we discussed, okay? Uh, Romulus. And uh, also let's remember that he co-reigned for a few years with Titus Tatius as Sabine. Now we have uh, Numa Pompulius, also a Sabine. Tullus Hostilius, and then Ancus Marcius, also a Sabine. Okay. Now, um, Romulus, warlike, Numa, peaceful, Tullius, uh, Tullus, rather, warlike, Ancus, sort of this middle ground, uh, portrayed as someone who wanted to adhere to the virtues of his grandfather, Numa, but was drawn into conflict. And Rome is going to use that excuse many times you know, they um never really attack anyone they're always just defending themselves so the three kings from the tarquin dynasty will include uh tarquinius priscus or just tarquin uh he's the father and uh, a decent but a very manipulative king servius tullus uh tullius uh, he is considered the adopted son of uh Tarquin, and he is his successor. We'll go into the ins and outs of that. And then we have Tarquinius uh, Superbus, or Tarquin the Proud. He is a real son of uh, Tarquin, and he is the last king of Rome. He usurps Servius Tullius, and he, he himself is usurped by an angry mob and an ensuing revolution. So let's get into Lucius Tarquinius Priscus, the fifth king of Rome. His dates are 616 to 579 BCE. He's the first Etruscan to become king. And um, I will refer to him uh, as Tarquin, right? And uh, you could also call him Lucius if you wanted to. Again, his dates are 616 to 579. Now, um, he was an Etruscan nobleman who had migrated to Rome, uh, and he was, it, based on my research, was uh, of sort of a mixed, uh, mixed descent, okay? So, meaning that he, uh, his parents were different tribes or, or, or something of that issue. He had basically gone as far up the social ladder as he could go in Etruria. Okay, um, so he's, he is a nobleman from Etruria, though. He had migrated to Rome in search of more social and political mobility. He's from uh, Tarquinia. This is one of the 12 confederated cities of Etruria. And um, he arrives in Rome and begins sponsoring building projects, donating to charities, public events, things like that. And eventually he gains the attention of Ancus Marcius. And this is in the king's final years. This is when he's older. Now Tarquin gained Ancus's confidence and is appointed guardian of his two sons for uh, if anything is to happen to Ancus Marcius. Now, when Ancus Marcius dies, Tarquin sent the king's two sons on a hunting trip and asked the Senate to hold elections for the next king. So think hereditary monarchy, passing down from father to son and repeating, is not an established concept in Rome, and Tarquin is able to sway the choice of the assembly and is declared the fifth king of Rome. This is where we really start to see this Etruscan influence on Roman culture. Tarquin Dynasty is going to sponsor many building projects in Rome. They would drain uh, the damp lowlands around Rome and construct sewers that I'd mentioned previously. Uh, and he also built a stone wall around Rome and constructed temples during his reign. He ordered uh, the construction of a hippodrome called the Circus Maximus between Palatine and uh, the Aventine Hills. This uh, would be one of the greatest uh, sporting venues in the ancient world used for chariot racing. 
and this would be sir, uh, serve the Circus Maximus would serve as a model for later stadium constructions during the Empire period. Now, one of Tarquin's first acts as king was to expand the Senate to 300 total senators. So it's grown from 100 to 200 to 300 now. Uh, the new senators uh, were Tarquin supporters uh, and uh, supporters of his policies and agenda for Rome. And he was able to use that to sway things in his direction many times. He defeated Latin tribes as well as a Sabine opposition during his uh, time on the throne. And he has a 38-year reign before he is assa- assassinated by a pro-Marcius uh, faction. Okay, so here's what goes on with that. The sons of Ancus Marcius want to reclaim the throne. So they hire uh, men to assassinate the king. Okay, so basically what happens, these guys show up and we're pretending to have a dispute, which was is ultimately brought before the king. King agrees that he's going to solve the disputes, which is one of his jobs. And um, this is when one of the men kill Tarquin. Uh, both of the men are captured after this. So what happens, the king's wife uh, brought in Servius Tullius, Tullius uh, and when this happened, um, she told him that uh, they needed to conceive a plan to prevent Ancus's sons from becoming king. So the queen announced that the king would recover from his wounds to the Roman people. But the fact is, the king got hit like in the back of the head with a battle axe, and he's not going to recover. Uh, he's actually already dead. So Servus Tullius serves as regent until... Uh, until the official uh, death of Tarquin is confirmed. Uh, once this happens, Tullius will become the next king, and Anxus' Anx- sons will be sent into exile. Now, sort of while this is going down, they uh, launched an attack on Rome, and Servius is able to defeat them in battle. After that event, uh, the death of Tarquin is announced, and Servius becomes the next king of Rome. Okay, so let's talk about Servius Tullius, the sixth king of Rome. Servius reshaped Roman society. He also carried out the first known census. Uh, and this is the first known census in history. So the Roman citizens were counted, listed, and distributed into classes uh, and political groupings. People were graded according to their status and prestige. And census detailed every Roman's obligation to the city to pay taxes, obey laws, and perform military services. Romans were given rights by Servius also. They were given a say in how their city was run. He gave the city an assembly um, and uh, some people say that um, Servius was the originator of the Senate. Now, uh, that could just be in a more uh, closer form to what we know as the Senate that is existing in the early Republic. But Rome would need uh, soldiers to fight in its wars in order to expand the body of loyal infantrymen. The immigrants uh, were granted citizenship for uh, this reason. So that's a, a serious change by Servius. It's also thought that Servius Tullius introduced the hoplite phalanx to Rome with immigrants fighting its ranks. Now, the census decreed uh, that each soldier or each social class in Rome would provide soldiers who would fight in Rome's defense exactly um, and exactly what service they would provide. Now, uh, we've referred to this, but the Roman Legion is the official fighting force of Rome. This is going to have men between the ages of 18 and 40 fighting in the legions. Now, uh, Servius' reign is progressing nicely when the sons of Tarquin begin to pose a threat. Now, Servius had married his daughters to the two Tarquin sons. But one of them, Lucius, felt like he should be the king. The king's own daughter even wanted Lucius on the throne. So Servius Tullius is eventually murdered after a 43-year reign when a struggle breaks out between uh, Lucius supporters and Servius supporters. 
Now, Lucius Tarquinius Superbus, or Tarquin the Proud, is the seventh and last king of Rome, and he is a tyrant. He's vain, arrogant, dismissive of his constituents of the uh, advisory body of the Senate. He's known for brutality and decadence during his reign. He is devoted to removing any political opposition. He would arrest and uh, execute any of his political opponents. He confiscated property. He reduced the size of the Senate. And Romans uh, really began to, under Tarquin the Proud's reign, to hate the influence of the Etruscans. So uh, Tarquin the Proud, uh, Lucius' son, Sextus would commit an act uh, that would spurn the wrath of the Romans when he raped a well-loved and highly regarded noblewoman named Lucretia. So we got another story of rape here with the rape of Lucretia. So Sextus had met Lucretia at a noble dinner party and lusted after her. One version of the story says that Sextus and other Etruscan nobles were spying on women of Rome and they found their own wives partying, but Lucretia was hard at work embodying these uh, Roman virtues of honor and bravery and, and all of these uh, these different virtues that Romans possessed that the ruling Etruscans did not. And that is definitely how this story is told in a lot of accounts. So the next day, uh, after being raped, uh, 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 now Sextus uh, says that if she tells anybody, he'll kill her, right? But uh, the next day, Lucretia told her husband, uh, who's named Colotinus, okay? Now, his name is Lucius Tarquinius Colotinus. He is actually the cousin of the king. So she tells him what Sextus had done and then commits suicide by stabbing herself in the heart with a dagger. So a Roman nobleman named uh, Lucius Junius Brutus organizes an attack on uh, the Etruscan monarchy in Rome after that, raises this revolt, leads an army into Rome. Now, Brutus was the king's nephew, Glotinus the king's cousin. So what happens is Lucius Tarquinius Superbus is overthrown in 509 BCE, exiled from the city due to the efforts of Glotinus and Brutus. In 509, the Roman monarchy was overthrown. Rome officially will become a republic. Now, Romans vowed to never again live under a king, and they will sort of start making revisions of how they're going to live and govern themselves moving forward. From this uh, period on uh, until the empire, Rome uh, and the affairs of Rome would belong to the people. And citizens would vote, and Rome would be a res publica, or a public affair. Rome is no longer going to be a place of kings, but a place of laws and elected officials, where it'll be the rule of law, not the rule of man. Two consuls would be elected annually. Clotinus and Brutus were the first two consuls in Roman history, serving in 509 BCE for that year next time we're going to be lecturing on the early republic we'll be going into detail on uh early middle and late roman republic in uh lectures after that before we transition into a major discussion of the roman empire which will see the rise and spread of christianity so note once again, please, the divisions of uh, Roman history to help you with chronology of the kingdom, republic, and empire, and our three divisions of the republic, which we're going to be getting into next, are the early, middle, and late. All right. Thanks for listening, everybody. We uh, appreciate you uh, tuning in. If you have questions, please drop them in the comments if you're listening on YouTube, or you can send me an email, wilson at uaccm.edu. Talk to you soon.